What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the War Report of Cloudwing Valley. It is Season 6. We are in Week 9 for the date of February 20th, 2021. As you guys know, the Scourge of Winter is coming to a close. we got two more Territory Wars before the final curtain drops. Now, what that means, we don't know yet. We most likely will see either next week or the week following what's in store for the next season. Um, I really hope that's going to be Vikings. Yeah, well, that's been my hope ever since the beginning. But I'm going to keep hoping. You know, we need some shield maidens up in here, right? Right? Come on. There's not a single troop that's a woman. We need some women fighters up in here. There were tons of women warriors in history. Let's go. Well, this week, we definitely saw some cool turns of events. And I mean really cool. Like, things were changing Big time. So first up, we're going to do a region by region outlook. We're going to jump over into the boring borderlands where all the new players go and uh, take over territories for the first time. It's a good place to get your first territory, guys. If you are a new house looking for a little land, come out to the borderlands. Come get something. You can even try to steal one of ours. I'll be happy with that. Go for it. All right, let's go ahead and flip this over. But uh, there's the Borderlands. So as you can see, about 50% of it changed over the last week. Um, not a whole lot of big fights in the Borderlands. Um, we did not see a ton of action. There was a lot of flipping of fiefs with little five-man groups hitting here and there. There was a couple big fights I'll cover a little bit after this. And uh, we'll go through all the weekly battles that I saw. I'm going to go ahead and do the, the summaries first and then jump into those. So I did it reversed last week, but I'm not sure which way is better. Thank you, Ronin. So let's go ahead and take a look at who's the winners and losers of the Borderlands. Huzzah! Here we go. So Goshkia gained six fiefs, mostly ones that we used to own and were given back to us. Um, and then a couple from a, another house that said, here, take our fiefs. And we're like, okay. So, uh, yeah, we're sitting there with six more fiefs. Radiance got six more. They came back after getting poked a few times and decided to come back and reclaim some of their old stomping ground. Defiance came in through the south today and started taking a bunch of stuff in the very far south. Uh, Vangarian Guard, they're over in the northwest side of the borderlands, and they've been poking around over there, holding their own pretty well. They fought over one of the, I think it was the, the big wall up there. Managed to hold on to that tonight. Uh, Digital Order came over, took two, and then we saw Korea make a, a grand appearance over here in the borderlands. Welcome to the party, Korea. I've seen you for a few weeks poking people. It's great to see you finally secure some land. Primal kind of bowed out. Didn't see any action from them. Didn't even see them join a fight this Saturday, so I'm not sure where they went, but they're lingering somewhere. Uh, Midway Kings lost one. Fallen Kingdoms lost two. Uh, Red Star Vanguard, they pulled out. Lost both of their fiefs, pretty much to us. They gave them to us. And then High Kings left and uh, lost four. Next up, Anadolu. And that's what this looks like. Yeah, we're looking at about an 80% change. Yeah, 80% of the zone changed hands. Now, there was a lot of fighting over there. Um, Molnair came back, started pushing back. Uh, hear, speak, see, and now smell? There's a smell? I mean, why not? You, you might as well. <laughs> but just don't pull their finger. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, we saw all kinds of fighting down there. Uh, Knights Templar went down there, took a bunch of a land. It was quite interesting. Um, big news of the night is that Yellow Turbans managed to pry away Regionopolis. Um, that was a really long fight. Like, I was watching that. It did not go instantly. It was, like, probably down to the wire. I mean, I blinked, and it was over, and I was like, whoa, what happened? I didn't even see the numbers drop. So I'm not sure what all went down there. I wish I could have, you know, spectated that. But uh, I'm pretty sure that it went to down to the wire. And uh, congratulations to Yellow Turbans for securing all three cities. That's quite a feat. But uh, you better you better savor this moment, Yellow Turbans, because, you know, everybody's coming for you next season. I can guarantee it. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to you guys. 
Let's see if you can hold it for one more week. Maybe somebody will pry one of those cities away. Still want to see the, the evil crew give you guys a shot one of these days. That would be fun. Now for the summary. Here we go. Big entrance by Knights Templar. Six fiefs. Atlas took five. Radiance took four. The Templars took four. Digital Order took four. Soda took three. Vornair took three. Here lost eight. Speak lost eight. And Molnair lost 13. Yeah, big changes over in uh, Anna, Anadolu. Anadolu. Yeah, that's it. That's got to be the right word. It's probably like Frank. Yeah. Next up, we will go over to Ungabunga. And here we are. Pretty much about 75% of the world changed. Um, I have to say, look at the board and look how many cohorts there are. There's a whole lot of cohorts over in Ungavaria. I mean, that is amazing feat right there. They own probably a good 75% of the world over there. And uh, congratulations to cohorts. You guys are, are real champions this season. I didn't really build a system for cohorts because there's no way to see what you guys own. But if you did, I guarantee you, you would have been one of the leaders on the board. So hats off to you guys. Thank you for showing up this season. You guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. Love you guys. Now, if we look at the the risers and the losers, um, cohorts actually lost seven. Uh, Vornair lost five. Knights Templar lost five. Soda lost one. Templars lost one. Digital Order gained one. ATS gained one. Radiance gained one. Nightmare gained one. Resurrection gained two. Defiance gained two. Atlas gained two. And Molnair gained three. And then Nicoria Empire gained six. Now on to the main event over in Austria. It actually was fairly quiet. I mean, this last week, like the, tonight, I, I didn't see that much over there. It was, it was very quiet. I was really surprised at how quiet it was. But, uh, you know, the uh, Tuesday had a few things poking up here and there. There's a few good fights happening. Um... I think we saw a Cohort Radiance fight, Yellow Turbans versus Almighty King, Knights Templar versus Almighty's King, Deathblood, and Valor faced off today. And then, this is a funny name. Okay, there's, there's a new house that popped up on the map called Noble Narwhals. Yes, them and Deathblood took on Valor tonight, and I was, like, just flabbergasted by that name, Noble Narwhals. That's probably one of the best, coolest names I've heard in a while. So welcome to the party, guys. Please go take something. We got plenty of land over in the borderlands. Come grab something. Come join the party. Now if we look at the rise and the fall, we got Radiance with five new fiefs, Knights Templar with four new fiefs, the Templars with four new fiefs, Atlas with two new fiefs, Deathblood with one new fief, Digital Order with zero, Cohorts minus one, the Pirates minus one, they lost Westwick this week, I believe. Soda minus one, Molnair minus one, and Defiance minus two. So really quick before we go into the leaderboards, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the big fights Tuesday and Saturday. All right, for Tuesday, I spied Cohorts versus Radiance with Radiance on top for Agolia. That wasn't that big of a defense. I think there was like seven Cohorts in there. I'm not sure what all went down, but the Cohorts were, did not show up that one. I think they were on protest. Uh, Yellow Turbans and Almighty Kings uh, on Nordtal. And uh, Yellow Turbans won. Man. Turn bads, <laughs> bands, turn bands. I misspelled that big time. <laughs> uh, Knights Templar and Almighty Kings on Westwig. Knights Templar won. Yeah, spelling is hard. Don't judge. Cohorts and Sodium Dystopia on Arnie. Uh, cohort said, I'll be back. 
and uh, Sodium Dystopia lost that fight. Uh, Vornir in digital order, Vornir won. Sodium Dystopia in cohorts, cohorts on top. Sodium Dystopia in digital order, and digital order was on top of that one. Cohort in the Nokori Empire, and Cohort said, not today. Molnair and No Evil on Lystra, and No Evil came out on top. Then No Evil took on Niflheim, the entire alliance, and uh, they ended up winning on Fort Hypate. And that was Tuesday's big fights that I spied. Uh, there was lots of other fights going out, but those were kind of the bigger ones that I managed to keep track of while I was uh, trying to watch my own territory. Let's go ahead and take a look at Saturday. So there was a lot more action today, let me tell you. Valor and Deathblood over on Grunfield, Valor on top. Valor is a noble Narwhals and Deathblood on Strand Strandorf, and uh, Valor on top of that one. Yellow Turbans versus the Cohorts on Hersek Var, and uh, Yellow Turbans came out on top. Cohorts in Nikoria Empire faced off on Vesegi, and uh, Cohorts came on top. Cohorts versus ATS, and uh, Cohorts won that fight. Cohorts versus Atlas, and they won that fight. Cohorts versus ATS and Resurrection, and they won that fight. Yellow Turbans versus Cohorts and Friends on uh, Tevez, and uh, Yellow Turbans pulled off the win. Cohorts versus ATS, and Cohorts came out on top. Cohorts and Niflheim, and Niflheim managed to come out on top on that one. And then Cohorts versus YT plus Niflheim plus Nikoria on Radar Var. And the Cohorts still managed to save the day and come home with a win. Uh, Radiance took on No Evil and uh, won that fight. That one went for a good long while. Uh, I, I was watching that for quite a bit of my time tonight. Uh, Molnair and Yellow Turbans face off Regionopolis. Came down to the wire. They managed to pull it off. Congratulations, Yellow Turbans. Sodium Dystopia versus Digital Order, and Sodium Dystopia came out on top. And then Vangarian Guard versus the Almighty Kings on Carl's Batch. That went for a little while there, and uh, Vangarian Guard finally came out on top. So congratulations to all the winners. There were a lot more fights than that, and I really want you guys to uh, pat yourself on the back. You had some good fights tonight. Huzzah! Nothing to be ashamed of. Losing, losing is never a bad thing. It's educational. Trust me, we've lost a lot to get to where we are today. And each one of those losses helped us get better. So don't look at it as, as a defeat. Look at it as fuel for tomorrow. So just keep on pushing, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at some leaderboards. Now, one cool feature I did plug into the site this week, and I will reflect it onto the war report um, onto the site is the influence gains. So now I have the fief level translating to influence so that we can see who which house has the most influence. So this is what we end up with. Sorted by influence, Radiance currently has the most influence with 16,000, I think that's 16, 15,900. Sorry, my window is really small compared to yours, so. I'm trying to see it with my little eyes. Uh, Digital Order has 7,650. Gosh, Gia, somehow, it's because we upgrade things. I swear to God, it's because we upgrade things. 5,400. Midway Kings is at 5,250. Defiance has 4,650. Atlas with 3,400. Speak with 3,300. Here with 3,150. Deathblood with 3,000, and Vangarian Guard with 2,100. So this week's gains and losses. We have Radiance gaining 18, Digital Order with gaining 7, the Templars gained 7, Nikoria Empire gained 6, Goshka gained 6, Nice Templar gained 5, Defiance gained 5, Vangarian Guard gained 3, Atlas gained 3, and Deathblood gained 1. For the biggest losses, we have Molnir with minus 12, Here with minus 8, Speak with minus 8, Nightmare with minus 6, that kind of makes sense being they change zones on everybody. And then Resurrection with minus 5, High Kings with minus 4, Vernair minus 3, Red Star Vanguard minus 2, 
ATS minus two, and Fallen Kingdoms wiped completely off the board with minus two. Not sure where you are, Fallen Kingdoms, but if you want some land, come see me. I will uh, I will fix it for you. All right, Alliance standing. There we go. We have yellow turbines on top with uh, 26,950 influence. That's pretty massive. Second place is Hibernia with 8,600. No Evil with third place, 6,450. Almighty Kings, 5,700. Valor, 3,000. Fabled Few, 2,100. Steel Battalion, 2,100. Sonian Dystopia with 1,800. Broken Arrow, new entry into the battlefield scene. That was a combination of, I believe, ATS and Resurrection. And uh, that's 1,350. And then Niflheim with 1,200. Biggest Gains, um, Yellow Turbans with 28 Thiefs. Valor with 12 Thiefs. Hibernia with 7 Thiefs. Steel Battalion with 6 Thiefs. Fable Few with 3. Biggest Losses, No Evil with 16. Niflheim with 12. Broken Arrow with 7, uh, Almighty Kings with 5, and Sodium Dystopia with 3. Next up, Top Builders. We still have a lot of really good real estate on the market. Um, quite a few of the fees. We have a new... Yeah, Salty Var went up to 5 this week. I spied. So uh, that's a that's one of the walls, and I believe that's in Ungavaria. Yep. So we have a, a new champion of fortress. We still have a whole crop of sixes when it comes to the uh, the towns. What's three of them left? Yeah, there's three sixes left. My stream just froze. Not sure why. You guys still see stuff? I hope you do. All right. Villages. Refresh it. Seems to work. So villages, we have, what, eight fiefs over level one. So in the whole world, there are eight fiefs over level one. One, which is level four, which is Alino. That's one of ours that we've been upgrading. We are getting tier four and five thief quests over in that northeast corner of the borderland. So if you need a little quick pick-me-up of uh, honor, come on up. Turn in some thief quests. Everybody's welcome to do so. We don't kill people over there. We uh, let you farm for 20%. Always welcome you. Now looking at the diamond and golden leagues next. And I've decided next season we're going to do this a little differently because this this way sucks. I'm sorry, guys. I failed at my first attempt. I'll admit it. I'll do better next season, I promise. But yeah, it, it pretty sucks. Yeah, it's it's no no joking about it. It's just bad. Sorry, guys. Uh, Nordtal and Westwig are the big Austarian thieves. We've got uh, Digital Order and uh, the Pirates fighting over those two uh, for the leaderboard there. Um... See, the biggest thing I need to do, and you guys can all hold me to it, is next season, make sure I pick thieves I can actually pronounce. Because I can't pronounce half of these. I mean, I don't even know. I, I should have been born somewhere else where I can learn to speak another language. Because, yeah, I, I don't even know how to make sense of those. But, yeah, this is the Golden League. Um, we have Digital Order pretty much running Ungavaria because the cohorts are dominating everybody. That's honestly what's going on over there. And Lodu is uh, here in Molnair. And then Borderlands, Atlas still on top over there. Uh, Gashkia has Zune uh, over there with six. So we've gotten six points. This is really confused. Next season, it's going to be mostly influence-based, I believe. And maybe if I do anything, it's going to be some key fiefs on the outside for the low-level houses to come play with. And maybe we'll just stick them all in the Borderlands let people play with them there but I really want to turn this into something that's that you guys actually enjoy and I'm not sure anyone really cares about this but you know I hope to think that someday somebody will now the diamond league what the hell did I just do 
There we go. There we go. It's back. Everything went black for a minute there. Pretty much this league, I should have had the three capital cities as a big event. But no. A little foresight. Didn't see that coming. Oops. But instead, we have Radiance pretty much dominating with uh, uh, Digital Order over in Australia. Radiance in Molnair fighting over Ungavaria. Ananolodu is uh, Redfall and here. Uh, and then Borderlands is Goshkin Radiance. And that pretty much brings us full circle. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Now, I do have a question for you guys over in chat. Would you guys be interested on week 11, you know, the week after the final week, would you guys like to get, like, the house leaders of each of the houses that have been represented here into the Discord and have a little live stream session where we talk about the things that we liked about the season, uh, you know, what kind of rivalries are there? Would you guys like that? Because I was thinking of trying to organize that on the following week when we're all in drill mode. You know, let people talk, introduce the, the various house leaders, and, and let them give a little spiel about who they are. I think it would be pretty nice. Um, and then the following week, after that, being there's going to be two back-to-back -back dead weeks most likely, I was thinking of bringing those same people back to talk about what we probably will see coming in Season 7 and what our expectations are and what we're hoping for. Because I think it could be a really fun thing to kind of hear what these big house leaders want to want to see next season. Because it's, it's going to be fun. I guarantee you they're starting to turn this corner. They're making a lot of really good content. This season, we had a lot of really good things that didn't happen this season that happened last season, like the Endless Lorene Bug. You know, how many wars did we lose because we couldn't get into a thief? You know? Eh, I don't know. I, this this season seemed to be a lot smoother, and I'm really I'm really happy with how this season turned out as opposed to last season because last season was just a dumpster fire. It was 2020 incarnate, and the season before that was just about as bad. So this one really went well. I do hate the snow, and I'm really looking forward to the sandy beaches of the next season. Hopefully, maybe we'll see. I I do like your Vikings idea, tripping. I, I would love to have those double axes. That would be awesome. But uh, you know. We'll see. So in any case, thank you all. I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you for coming week after week. Um, I will continue to make this thing better. I hope to do really cool things in the future. And uh, with your support, I will just keep doing it. So uh, I know I'm not the best at it, but I'm going to keep doing it anyways. That's pretty much how I've done my life. So uh, thanks, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you next time. And I'll, I'll leave you with this little trailer for anyone that's interested.